Now I'd love to know the official line why Volkswagen keep on fitting this crap to their cars. Hello and welcome back to the Volks Wizard channel. Now a couple of weeks ago I posted a video in which I protected the underbody of my Porsche 718 GT4 from the rigours of winter. Well today it's the turn of my Mark 7 Golf GTI Club Sport S. Now when I filmed the work at the end of 2023 I was unaware of any corrosion issues with the 7 or 7.5 GTI but a couple of weeks ago I was sent some images of a 2020 model year 7.5 GTI to one of the last off the production line and the corrosion on that car, I've got to say, actually shocked me. So I've extended this video to share with you those images and also film some new footage that shows you how to protect those particularly vulnerable areas. But first, let me remind you how you can support the channel. As ever, the easiest way to support the channel is simply to subscribe. But there's another way which can benefit you too, and that is by giving me the opportunity to pay more for your car. I'm still buying for a very reputable dealer who at the moment is actually very open-minded about which models to buy. So to keep things simple, we're looking for any well-presented VW or Audi up to eight years old with a low mileage and a full service history. In particular, but not exclusively, Audi S and RS models, Performance Golfs and high-spec Tiguan Q3 and Q5. So if you've got anything that matches that description, do not hesitate to contact me directly by email, andrew at volkswizard.co.uk. Right, now let's get protecting my Motsam Golf GTI Club Sport S. Okay, so just like with the Cayman, we have pressure washed the Club Sport S's wheel arches and gone for a drive to dry off, and it's lovely and dry and pretty clean in there. The big difference is back in the summer, I replaced the Club Sport S's front shocks trying to find a rattle. It didn't do it, by the way, but I will talk about that in another video. And I also took the wheel arch liner off just to see what was in there, to see if that could be rattling as well. And while that was off, it would have been rude not to give the area a good blast with this built Humber Dynax UC. Also, a big difference with the Porsche is that there's not an awful lot of colour on the inner wing, which to me looks like it's not particularly well protected. So I've given that a coat of wax. You can see that you can see it smudge there. It's pretty transparent, to be honest, which is what you want. And there, and I just feel a lot better with this covered in the wax. And because I took the arch liner off, I got right into the wing and you can see the sun has made it melt a bit and it's dripping onto the sill. But that just shows that it's, you know, working. It does penetrate where you can't spray as it kind of drips down. So that's really, really good. But I want to give it another coat. There's a few more bits to do. We haven't got a steel subframe like we do on every other Mark 7 Golf, apart from the very late TCL. We've got aluminium down there, that silver thing. Actually, that looks pretty good. So I'm not really going to be too worried about that, but we've got black wishbones, black anti-roll bar, and a tie rod. And I think we'll give the strut a bit more in the spring at the top as well, and also the top mount up there. And that should do the trick. I pretty much used a whole can on the GT4 and I've just started this cam. Well, actually I've done the other side of the cart already, so I reckon there's quite a bit more to do on the Golf, strangely, probably because there's a lot more steel, but I reckon you can do both cars with one cam if you're pretty careful not to waste it. Actually, the bit I really want to do is this cap on the gearbox, because that can can corrode. That's on there. And then let's start at the top, so. Top mount. Spring. So you keep on trying different angles to get it on and then just work it in with your hands just to make sure you're not missing anything. Like so. Get right around the back of the spring. That's nice. And then the strut itself. And again, just massage it in around the back. These DCC bits do like to corrode as well. So get in there, get in the top of the spring mount. And there we go. The drop links, which were new because trying to find the rattle, get those covered in a bit of wax. That's good. And also these brake 
unions are important. That's good. Anti-roll bar down there, black, which means it's just got a light coat of paint on a primer. And let's just massage that in. Lovely. It's high rock and track rod ends. Get a bit on the nut there. You don't want that corroding. Okay, again, we've got an aluminium hub and that's really looking pretty good, but we'll give that a bit of coat. And there's some big bolts and nuts that we want to stop corroding. That's good. Again, let's just rub that in around the back. That's really good. Okay, that just leaves really the drive shaft. If you've ever seen those corrode, the black paint just comes off in massive flakes, so we really do want to avoid that. And then we have the wishbone, which is black. That means, again, it's pretty flimsy steel. Now, obviously, if you're going to do this, get underneath the car. I recommend you use axle stands, and it's pretty important to do that. So we want to get the wall joint. threads because they can corrode and then underneath the wishbone. Okay, now this is the level sensor for the Xenon headlights and uh, actually it's no harm getting the wax on there, it's a good little bit of lubricant and it's got a bracket on the wishbone that corrodes really quickly so that's really good. Now you can obviously brush it on if you feel better doing that um, but yeah, it's it's going on pretty nicely like this. Now you can see at the front of the wishbone, it gets battered a lot, so that's a lot better. Right, job done. Let's move on to the back now. Okay, so if you want to do this properly, you need to remove the wheel arch liner. It doesn't take long at all. There are about 10, 11 T25 screws holding it in place. They're all pretty easy to get to. And then that gives you really good access to the wheel arch. You can see there's hardly any paint in here, so I think it's pretty necessary to cover it in some wax. You can see some metal brackets at the back that hold the bumper on that tend to corrode. You can see the back panel of the car. You can even get to the back of the quarter panel as well. So yeah, it does make life a lot easier and it does give you um, the opportunity to do a very, very proper job. And we've got quite a bit of this left, so there's no reason to spare it. So again, let's start at the top. Let's get the aluminium top mat there sprayed. It's a little bit corroded. Get right into that turret because killed many Mark 1 Golf corrosion of that area and then we want to give the whole inner arch a light coating looking good and try not to get your head in in there and that should keep that looking fresh quite a long time. That is all it takes. But Volkswagen don't want our cars to last forever, do they? Okay, this um, poor arm here, it's quite visible and can go a bit brown, so get on there. And obviously try and get on the inside of it as well. Hard to do that with filming, so I'll do that off camera. And then it's only this bottom part of the strut we need to worry about. Springs easy to get all the way around at the back here, anti-roll bar in there as well. And then we have the suspension arms, which are really prone to corrosion, particularly on the front. We'll have a look at that in a sec. But as you can see, really easy to get to. That looks a lot better. Get inside it as well. And then the subframe bit here, get a bit in there, and then just get as much in there as you can. Obviously the exhaust is pretty close, but we're not going to be spraying that close to it. And it'll just burn it off anyway. Um, just maybe smoke and smell a bit when you warm the car up. 
Okay, I think that's good. A bit more subframe in there. Lovely. And then another arm. This is white called multi-link rear suspension. We have a lot of bits to get to. Brake pipe union. Big bolt of nuts. The hub. Let's have a look in the back there. So this is the splash guard for the disc. It's going to get quite hot and they're not that expensive to replace. So I wouldn't worry too much about spraying on there. But let's just have a look at the hub. Yeah, it's already a bit brown. So let's see what this does to it. It's a bit brown in there as well. Okay, let's have a look at the front of the suspension arm. Yeah, I think that's a lot worse than the back, probably because it might get chippy and stuff because it's in the line of fire. That's good. No, the hub. Okay. Right, again, if you're going to get underneath the car, make sure you use an axle stand. It's very hard to be as thorough as I need to be holding a camera. So I'm going to do a bit more off camera. That's pretty good. Under there, you can see it's a bit brown. But I can't really do anything about the exhaust, but that arm looks pretty good. And don't forget, to rub it in where you can, spring especially. Lovely DCC bit, already a little bit corroded. Being extra thorough. Mark 5s tend to have a habit of rusting around this area, almost like the bumper rubs on the quarter panel, so we'll give this area a bit of an extra spray. And then this bracket here, I think it's bumper to body. We'll give that a good spray because that does corrode. And actually, let's get a bit behind the quarter panel there. Okay, now onto those shocking pictures of the corrosion on the Mark 7.5 Golf GTI. Now they aren't shocking in themselves because there aren't massive areas of rust with bits of metal falling off, etc. They're shocking when you think that this is a four-year-old Golf GTI that is a 2020 model year, so one of the last they ever built. It's done low mileage, under 30,000 miles. You'd thought they'd have built them as best as they could do after an eight-year production run, but clearly not. Now the owner has produced a PDF document. He's marked the corrosion in two different ways. Areas of corrosion are horizontal yellow lines and areas where the paint is chipped off are marked by yellow circles. He's treated the corrosion in these images but it still looks pretty bad and he's also dropped in photos of other another car that it probably got off a forum that's white. Let's ignore those because we don't know the age and mileage but they still look pretty bad but yeah without knowing the age and mileage and the history of that car it's hard to say how bad they are. Now he starts off on the offside front sill area where there's areas of corrosion sort of under the wing. The wheel arch line is really good there for protecting the bottom of the wing and the end of the sill, but he's got corrosion a bit further back on the sill. I don't know if this is related to the car being on brescia wheels because they've got a bit more offset, so that if they're flicking stones up, they'll flick them further out than if, if you had the standard 18-inch uh, Parker wheels. So yeah, front of the front of the sill is pretty bad. And then he's got that on the near side as well. And then onto the back, an interesting area that's really common on Mark 5 is where the quarter panel meets the rear bumper. I thought maybe the bumper rubbed on the quarter panel, but thinking about it, it could be more likely to be chipping. And he's got little areas of corrosion starting on both sides of the car. And there's some close-up photos of it. It doesn't look that bad, but when corrosion starts, with only one thing that happens, it keeps going and getting worse. And it's just 
good that he spotted it. Now, interestingly, you would think that the front of the rear wheel arch would be a, not a high risk area because the stones are going to be flicked up towards the back, which is the back bumper anyway, that's not going to rust. But it would appear, whether it's stones or something else, the end of the sill is rusting really, really badly. So what we're going to do is cover it with built hammer Dynax UC, um, but if you've already got the corrosion, you probably need to use other stuff like built hammer Deox gel, which the previous owner used. That's a rust remover. He also applied zinc primer and some stone chip paint, and then he finished it with Dynax UC. So have a good look at your car, see what state it's in, and treat it accordingly. But for now, we're just going to cover the areas on my car with built hammer Dynax UC protective wax. Okay, we're going to start at the front. I've taken the wheel arch liner out, and that means we can see what the wax looks like. Now it's been on the car for about six weeks. So there's nothing particularly obvious in here. You can see the waxy residue on the shock. And then if I run my finger down here, you can see it leaves a mark, and that's me rubbing the wax off. Let's just do it on this bit that's less shadowed. So you can see there's wax there. And I think that's perfect for a lot of people because I know you guys want to protect your cars, but you don't want it to look like it's been sort of covered in some, you know, wax that's really, really visible. So yeah, I'm super happy with that. Now, this is the vulnerable area on my car and it does look perfect. The stone chip protector is still intact and that's good. It's older than the car in the pictures, but it's done half the mileage. And I think that's pretty relevant because it seems to be stones that are doing the damage here, something to think about if you fit wheels that stick out because you get much more stone damage down the side of your car. Okay, so we just really need to get a bit of corrosion protection here. And this is a bad area anyway, so we're just gonna cover, this is the inside of the sill, this is the top of the sill. Um, let's just see, make sure you can see that. That's basically the sill step that carries on down there. So there's no point in putting a load of wax down there as well as you'll be able to see it. But these are the areas that are very prone on Mark 5 Golf and it looks like Mark 7 is going the same way. Now it's not much use for us today but I've used this extension hose for the Dynex UC uh, on my Mark 2 Golf GTI. I actually pulled the sill covers off on the inside and shoved this down the holes that are used by the retaining clips and it was brilliant. So uh, I don't know if these come with every Dynex UC but they're very very useful if you want to really get into crevices but not necessary today. So I'm just using the can with no attachments on the nozzle. That's good. And then... So we're just getting into the hollow of the sill and that corner there where it meets the body. It's very prone. Because mud comes, gets the wrong side of the arch line and accumulates down here. And uh, keeping this area clean is really, really crucial. But it's easier to just protect it. So accumulated mud, which stays damp through the winter, doesn't lead to corrosion. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. If there's bits that you find unsightly, well, once it's dried, you can just get them off with some uh, tar and glue remover. Now, before we move on to the rear wheel arch, I cannot believe that Volkswagen have still done this on a Mark 7 Golf after so many years of it causing corrosion. Now, this might be a little bit different to the ones in the earlier cars because it's maybe not so absorbent of water, but this bit sits on the wheel arch lip and you can see that it's got dirty marks on it. And this is a low mileage car that's really not been driven in bad weather that much. Um, so even though this doesn't absorb water, it will still trap muck, which gets on the wrong side of the wheel arch liner. Now I'd love to know the official line why Volkswagen keep on fitting this crap to their cars. I think it's something to do with reducing noise because wheel arches can boom at certain speeds. But what would you rather have? A bit of noise or some really annoying corrosion? And that's especially relevant on the Club Sport S because this car's got noise deadening taken out of it. So to leave this in, which it doesn't really need because it's quite noisy anyway, and also it will make such a precious car, 400 made, corrode a lot sooner, is just really, really wrong. So, but whatever Mark 7 Golf you've got, pop the arch liner off, so just 11 screws, get this out, put some built hammer in and relax. Right, onto the back. We can't relax just yet. 
Okay, so once again, I've removed the wheel arch liner. It's different at the back because instead of being a hard plastic, it's actually fabric to redu reduce noise. But because of that, they've got a hard plastic section down here, which is separate. And this is where the problem lies. Now, you wouldn't think that when a car's traveling, stones would hit this side of the car, but they do. They can sort of bounce in the wheel arch and off the tire and come down here and do damage. This section's been redesigned on Mark 8 because of this problem. Look at that. And this is a low mileage, sort of largely summer used car it was before I got it. So just brushing that out and then we'll give it a spray with just a multi-lube to clean it out. Okay, so we'll get a bit more in there now. Put it under, between the sill cover and the sills. Not a bad idea. Okay, I'm putting it on thick because you can't really see this area and it's so important. Okay, onto the second area at the back of the Mark 7 7.5 Golf, and that's where the quarter panel meets the rear bumper. Now, I've seen this on Mark 5s, really nice Mark 5s, low mileage Mark 5s, but you start to get rust just there, and this is what was shown in the 7.5 photos I showed you earlier, and I always thought it was rubbing of the bumper on the quarter panel, maybe it'd been badly fitted in the factory, but it could just as easily be a bad chip that takes the paint and protection off this area. And that's it, gone. So here I've done the same, I've brushed out all the muck and we're just gonna, I put some multi-lube to clean it off as best as possible, sorry about the light. And then we're just gonna get some Dynex UC in there. So yes, it will make a bit of a mess at first, but when it dries, just get it off with tar and glue remover and leave it only where you need it. Now, let's have a look at another area we can protect on the Mark 7 7.5. Okay, as well as the areas we've just treated, one of the photos that was most intriguing was the corrosion in the door seal. Now, I've seen this on really old cars, but not on something that young. And bear in mind, the area down here where the corrosion was is the dry side of the seal. So that's really, really strange but as I say I've seen it before and it's dead easy to prevent it so this time we're going to use ACF 50 which is a little bit more runny and it'll get into all the crevices down here so I'm just going to peel the seal back and then use the nozzle and just spray some ACF 50 in in between the seal and the plastic seal trim and because it's quite runny stuff it will just get into all the areas it needs to Now, I suspect a lot of you guys will be thinking you don't need to worry about corrosion because your car is going to be covered by the 12 year anti corrosion warranty that's supplied with every new Volkswagen. Well, there are two reasons why you should really take preventative measures. Firstly, Volkswagen don't like paying out for warranty claims, particularly since Dieselgate. And anti corrosion claims have always been very hard to get approved. Primarily because if you read the small print, it says it has to be caused by perforation, not by external damage. And the stone chipping that you see in the wheel arches is external damage. So I don't reckon you'll have much success with that. But the second reason is that you don't want your car to corrode in the first place. Because once it starts, it's almost impossible to stop it. So some very cheap and easy preventative measures like you've seen in this video will preserve your Volkswagen for a very, very long time. And bearing in mind, very soon we won't be able to buy internal combustion engine Volkswagens of any sort. Preserving the ones we've got right now is even more important than ever. And now I can enjoy this car in the winter, which actually on proper tyres like these Goodyear Eagle F1 Supersports, as opposed to the Michelin Pilot Sport Cup 2s it came on originally, it's in its element because the roads are nice and quiet in places like North Wales or the North York Moors or Scotland. And 
yes, it may not be warm, but as long as it's not freezing like it is today or wet like it was in most of December, then yes, you can have a lot of fun with your performance car at this time of year. And I'm hoping the next video I do on the Club Sport S will be me revisiting a road that I drove nine years ago in a Porsche 911 that I wished I was actually driving then in a hot hatch and there's no better hatch to do that road in than the Mark 7 Golf GTI Club Sport S. As ever guys, thanks for watching this Volkswizard video. Keep subscribing, keep commenting, and I'll see you for the next one very soon.